Hey guys, what's up? It's Kevin Schroff, and WWDC just finished with the exciting announcement of Apple's plans to transition its Macs away from Intel to its own ARM-based SoCs. But what does this mean for the future of Mac computers and the existing Intel-based Macs? And could macOS Big Sur be hinting towards touchscreen MacBooks? We'll be discussing that and more from WWDC now. So yes, the rumors were true all along. Apple is going to be transitioning its Macs away from Intel CPUs to their own ARM-based silicon. Firstly, let's talk about the upfront benefits us as potential users of ARM-based Macs will receive as a result of this transition. Compared to x86 CPUs, ARM-based SoCs have far lower power consumption just by their inherent nature and design. Specifically, the Apple A12Z, used for demo purposes in today's WWDC presentation, is an 8-core part that, under load, power consumption-wise generally hovers around the 8 to 11 watt range, whereas a similarly performing Intel-based CPU, such as the i7-1065G7 and the XPS 13, is rated for 15 watts, but in reality consumes in excess of 30 watts under load, and sometimes even has spikes of up to 40 watts. This massive delta in power consumption means that ARM-based Macs will be incredibly power efficient, meaning much better battery life and much more thermal headroom, since the chips in these Macs will be making only a fraction of the heat of their Intel-based predecessors. This leads us into the second point, which is drastically improved performance. The Apple A12Z SoC that is being used to demo macOS running on ARM is actually a CPU taken from the 2020 iPad Pro. That CPU was created for usage in a lightweight, slim tablet where there isn't much space to take care of things like thermals. Despite all of that, Apple managed to pack extremely impressive performance that rivals and in some places even exceeds traditional x86 Intel-based laptops. They did this all with a chip that wasn't even designed specifically for usage in a laptop, so imagine the performance they'll be able to get when they design and implement a chip specifically made to make use of and maximize the increased thermal headroom and space that laptops inherently have compared to smartphones and tablets. It could be entirely possible and is suggested by Apple themselves that the performance we'll be seeing coming out of ARM-based Macs will not only rival desktop class performance but even exceed it, all while using way less energy and producing less heat than competing x86 Intel chips. And these huge performance gains aren't limited to just CPU-bound tasks as well, but GPU too. Truly exciting and potentially revolutionary stuff. Other than these two major benefits of the transition to Apple's in-house ARM-based silicon, there are also some more benefits that could be seen when looking closer at the WWDC presentation. We can see mention of a high-quality camera processor. This indicates that the ARM-based MacBooks will finally have good quality webcams, with my guess being that the webcams on these devices will blow away the competition and probably end up being the first laptops with actually good webcams. Which sounds like a silly thing to say, but when you think about it, literally every laptop has a terrible quality webcam, and perhaps Intel chips and their camera video signal processing capabilities is the reason why. That, combined with the already excellent microphones and recent MacBook Pros will lead to an excellent video conferencing experience on these machines, which is becoming increasingly increasingly more important in the current worldwide situation. We also see interesting mentions of a neural engine, machine learning accelerators, and an always-on processor, meaning that native applications under macOS will be able to take advantage of these dedicated parts of the SSC to provide faster, accelerated performance with such tasks. How this is going to be used in macOS and third-party apps is yet to be discussed. Now some of you may be thinking that we've seen Windows on ARM twice, and arguably both times with Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 they've been a letdown. How is Apple's implementation of this going to be any different? Well, Apple holds a few key differences which in my eyes poise them for success with this transition to ARM. For starters, Apple's self-designed Bionic SoCs are some of the fastest smartphone and tablet CPUs to date. They've consistently been at the very cutting edge of ARM silicon design the past few years, usually being the leaders in raw performance compared to competing Snapdragon CPUs used in Windows ARM devices that have trailed in performance by up to 50%. Apple's edge in performance could help potentially overcome any performance hits encountered in x86 emulation, leading to a net positive in performance and power consumption compared to natively running the app on an Intel-based Mac. Apple also has very tight integration of their software and hardware, and have not only already made apps in macOS Big Sur ARM native, but have also developed Rosetta 2, which allows translation and running of existing Intel-based macOS apps on ARM-based Macs without any changes being made by the developer. They say that Rosetta 2 has fast performance and can even run complex programs like games or 3D computer graphics software like Maya, and that almost all existing applications will be able to work through it without any changes from the developer. And the last additional feature is that iOS and iPadOS applications will be able to work natively on ARM-based Macs as they share the same architecture, opening up even more cross-platform functionality in the future. 
Now with all this information in mind, we can make some reasonable predictions about the upcoming ARM MacBooks. Let's take a look at the UI of macOS Big Sur for a second. Have you noticed something different about the direction of the UI? Apple said they have made the entire UI more spaced out. They've also added a control center, which isn't useful on the existing MacBooks where we have a touch bar. But this is where my theory comes in. I believe the upcoming ARM MacBooks will have touchscreen displays. If you think about it, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Making macOS's UI more spaced out makes it much easier to interact with touch. And the control center itself looks entirely intended for touchscreen devices with its layout and design. If you look closely, the entire UI of Big Sur looks geared towards touch input. Bringing in the fact that macOS Big Sur can natively run iPhone and iPad apps on ARM Macs, touch coming to the ARM MacBooks makes complete sense. Secondly, we talked about the high quality camera processor earlier, so the ARM MacBooks are definitely going to have probably the best webcam seen to date on a laptop. Thirdly, I think that the first ARM MacBook they're going to introduce to us could be an ARM redesign of the 12 inch MacBook Pro. The 12-inch MacBook is the perfect device to introduce and demonstrate ARM capabilities. You can imagine what it would look like because it'll allow Apple to make the designs they've always wanted to make without being encumbered by things like thermal constraints. I think it'll be passively cooled, so no fans. I think it'll be very thin and small in size, have longer battery life than ever before, and yet still be able to pack a devastating amount of performance, possibly rivaling even desktops thanks to Apple's silicon. A transformative design like this being introduced as a first ARM MacBook would show off just how far ahead Apple is compared to the competition. But what about the existing Intel-based Macs? If you own or have just purchased an Intel-based Mac, there is no need to panic. While Apple is transitioning away from Intel to ARM, that doesn't mean that support for Intel Macs will be dropped immediately. It will be a very gradual and smooth process. And at the minimum, the existing Intel-based Macs will be supported for the next 5 years. But I personally believe they will be supported for way longer than that even. Because Apple themselves has plans for a new Intel-based device which was briefly mentioned at WWDC. Obviously Intel support under macOS isn't going to be dropped anytime soon. Otherwise why would that new Intel-based product be launching at all? Okay, so that covers my thoughts on Apple's ARM transition. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more tech videos. And comment down below what aspect you're most excited for about the ARM transition and if you think it's the right move. Also, the music used in this video was produced by me under the name Nivek Fours. If you want to hear more of it, links are in the video description. Thanks guys and see you later.